This is the game that will almost certainly decide this year's Six Nations Championship, Ireland versus Scotland. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me again today. There he is. Hello, TT. Thanks for having me. Super Saturday. And uh, yeah, the Celts are at us. <laughs> Indeed. And both these teams are coming off of very disappointing losses the previous week, but they're essentially playing for the championship. So how do you think psychologically these, these teams and these players are going to go about <laughs> this game? Yeah, it's 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 a it's an interesting one. Um, I don't know uh, who's in a better place. I think probably Ireland. Um, you know, I think uh, I think the fact that England played so well and it was it was in Twickenham, kind of okay. But I understand that Monday was a very uh, painful and interesting video session and very honest, and there was a. Yeah, there was a, a lot of people, <laughs> not thrown under the bus, but there was a lot of sort of um, honesty and, and finger pointing, rightfully so, um, probably probably, probably in the coaching staff as well, maybe. So, um, yeah, it, it, and then you got, you sort of got Scotland coming off, off the back of, of, a, of a disappointing, in inverted commas, uh, you know, performance over. And, and, and for them, it's kind of, um, they're going to get a lot of stick, I think, because, you know, we thought this this type of Scotland performance was was gone, maybe slightly disrespectful to, to Italy, but you would would have expected them to to kick on and and, and set up this huge game um, uh, in 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 the Aviva. Um, so it's really interesting psychologically is to see you know who, who's where. But I think for in one ways for Scotland though it does show that Ireland aren't this um, sort of invincible team. Um, they will be extremely dangerous and angry. And I would say defensively, you will see a much different animal. Um, having watched the game now four times uh, from the weekend, um, there was a lot of missed tackles, uh, a lot of poor D. So let, let's let's see what uh, Easterby's done this week. Wow, four times. That is some serious uh, reflection going on there. Um I mean, just in terms of the point about the, the players, you know, having an honest review session, that is an absolute key point of any match week, isn't it? You know, you have to be able to understand what you need to do, who's doing what. And, and if you fail or don't get things right, then it's only right that they get pointed out. And I think all the players are, you know, are big enough and ugly enough to, to totally understand that, take it on the chin and get better the following week. In terms of Scotland, I think that, you know, psychologically, I think you're right. I think it might be slightly harder for them because they've got this reputation of playing well one week and then not being able to back it up the following week. And it's it's happened to them again, uh, sadly. Again, no disrespect to Italy at all, you know, um, but it, they didn't perform as they would have liked to have performed. So, you know, how can they get into this game? I think they're going to have to have a fast start to have a, have a chance in this game. We shall see. Let's get into selections. And for Ireland, the forwards are exactly the same. Is that what you would have picked, Elko? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, is it what I would... Yes, and, and I, also it's what I thought Farrell would do um, because of what we've just said. Uh, there's no point having a really good, honest review um, and then not picking the guys to then help it. Or, or get better or make the changes that they've seen or, or you know, play play uh, in a different way or a better way. So I, I, th I think it's it's good. It shows massive confidence um, in, in what they're doing. Uh, for me, it's a blip last week, um, but also it was a really fantastic England performance. So you can't beat yourself up too much. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's picked the same team and, and I expect... Um, I expect us to come out of the blocks. Like you, know, you said, Scotland need a big start. I, th I think Ireland need a big start because we were second best at breakdown um, and in D um, in, that, in that opening sort of 5, 10, 15 minutes. Or certainly the tone was set by the guys in white and I expect the tone to be set by the guys in green this weekend. Yeah, all good stuff. Okay, on to the backs. And Nash is fit, which is good. Good for him. And... Um, Therefore, it's unchanged, isn't it? No changes there from the previous week. Yeah, uh, I hope I hope he's okay. You know, um, I, I, I don't 
I haven't read anywhere that he's had a history of of concussions. This might be his first one in senior, so you know, fair 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 enough. Um, but you know, if you're Scotland, you probably go. You're going to stick some high balls on him, aren't you? Um, and and test them out, sort of thing. So, um, I hope he's okay. But you know, if he's fit, he's he's fit. It's the same kind of thing. Pick 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 the guys again to go out and and um, make things right and. Uh, uh, go out and s- smash some people. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it is an interesting one. I, I I thought if you did go... I know there's secondary protocols, so presumably he's passed everything since then at every stage, so he's he's okay. But he, it was a nasty one. Um, bo- both of them were, were, were nasty. Um, I mean, he was knocked out. Um, but let's, you know, the, the doctors know what they're doing and um, let's see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree that the guys need to be given the opportunity to go out and put some of those things wrong. But also, just remember that Ireland were 90 seconds away from winning at Twickenham, Twickenham, having not played well particularly. It could have been, you know, if things had ended up differently, it could have been a real backs-to-the-wall performance. We haven't performed, but we took our points amazingly well when we had our chances. And, you know, the narrative could have been, that's a sign of a really good team. And, of course, they are a really, really good team. So, you know, one defeat does not change that. So these players will rightly be given a chance to go out and win the championship this weekend. Onto the bench. And what have we got here? Back to a 5-3 split uh, with Henderson missing out and Byrne coming coming in, along with Ringrose as well. Yeah, interesting. Uh... I was trying to think back. I, I, I didn't have time to to look at um, what we did in the World Cup, but I think I think we were five three. I think um, I can't remember whether or whether we were six two um, when we did the six two. But uh, you know, it makes complete sense. I think it's probably. Uh, I don't think you're losing you're losing much by not having Henderson there. Um, no offense to him, um, and I think you're gaining so much by having uh, Ring Rose back um, and Burn, which will then, you know, you know what happened last week was mad. That the, the two guys that happened to get concussed were the two people that were in the, you know, the, the substitutions made the big, big sort of difference, or that, or anything that could have gone wrong with a, with a, with a six two. That that's what it was, sort of thing. So. Um, I think uh, it's really good to see Ringrose back. Um, and I said, like, it, it, even if Ringrose was to come on and get injured, then you've still got Burn um, to, 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 to come on at a 10 and, and um, Crawley can go back to, to full back. So, yeah, I think it's the right thing to do, whether they were going to do that. Um, if they had a one last week or had planned to do it from a few weeks ago, I, I don't know. Um, but this way they're getting Ringrose back in and um, they still have a lot of dynamism and power coming off the bench in Conan and Baird, um, respectively. Yeah, tons of dynamism there, loads of firepower from the bench. And I agree, getting a you know a player that would be, you know, potential a World 15 outside centre back into your playing squad, it's vital. Um, so I think that's a good choice. On to Scotland. And what do we have here? Forward pack is exactly the same as the previous week. Um, and I think the forwards did pretty well, actually, in Italy. They turned up. They, they sort of did their basics very well. Scrum line out all went well. Uh, Christie had a, a very dynamic game in the six jersey. Showed up loads of times with ball carrying. So in that respect, I agree. And again, with psychologically as well, you know, you want to be able to go out and put things right if you're a player. If you've gone and had a a disappointing performance. You want to be able to go and and sort of yeah make things better the next week. Yeah, and uh, you know much like Ireland, I don't think uh, the individuals cost the game. I think it was probably in, in you know probably more so with Scotland. It was the game management um, nine and ten probably, and I think these guys did, did a decent job last week and 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 you know uh, looked looked okay. Um, so I, I think. I don't. I don't think they've got massive strength and depth to each making massive changes in the front row or anything like that. But they're they're a they're, they're a good unit um, in in set piece, and I think the back row looks looks tasty to me. Um, so uh, yeah, I wouldn't have changed anything. I think this is a good selection from Gregor. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I did question was whether Ferguson might come back in at six because Ireland are that physical. You know, Ireland are a very physical beast now, and I just wondered. 
to start the game, whether you wanted to sort of try and match that physicality. What this shows to me is that Scotland look like they might want to go there and, and really move the ball around. You know, that back row selection um, indicates that to me anyway. Yeah, I think that I think they'll want to they'll want to play and and with Christie there, you know, he's a ball carrying, he's 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 a different shape, um, but similar, a powerful runner to to a Ben Earl sort of thing. So yeah, and he, he's also a decent line out forward. So I, I think I th- it looks nice and balanced with him and Darge, um, either side of the scrum. So, but I I, I, I see what you're saying um, because Ferguson could have played across anywhere there, couldn't he? So. Um, yeah, no, I I would back that back row, and again, it's about you know what we said a few minutes ago. It's give them another go, and they they, they let's see how much pride they have in that jersey and, and come out firing. Yeah, I've no doubt they got a ton of pride. There's no question about that. Uh, as we look into the backs, and as w- widely predicted, Ben White has come back after his rest week. Uh, for George Horn, who played well last week, but again, similar to the Welsh centres that we spoke about earlier, I feel like White was always going to come back in no matter what. But the big choice, the big change here is uh, McDowell coming in for Redpath, uh, something that we sort of talked about uh, last week as a potential change. And it just offers something different for Scotland. It makes uh, them have a real physical presence in the midfield uh, as opposed to ball playing so much. So, Again, it's a very yeah, a very interesting decision. This, what do you what do you make of it? Yeah, this I, I think this is off the back of a lot of England um, and the power they have in the centre and the, the direction. He's a big kid, isn't he? McDowell? He's like six foot four, sixteen and a bit pounds. So he's, he's a he's a big unit. Um, so I, I think they'll they've seen something in the play last week um, that they're they're going to go after. Um, that red path maybe doesn't offer you although he's a fantastic player um and and can come on um but uh yeah i saw it was like mm, this 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 is interesting so they i think they come to play uh but i think they're going to be very direct and get into us um much like uh, england did and, and new zealand did in the, in the in the world cup um but it's uh, the rest of the the rest of the, the the back line looks looks fairly settled again, and, and I, I like White coming back in. Um, I think you're probably right that he, he, it it is he probably was going to come back, but also I think he's more of a danger, like Mitchell was last week. Um, I think that he'll want to. He scored some crackers th- this campaign already, so I think they'll want him sniping and interesting, um, the Irish back row, and which will create holes um, as we saw last week. Yeah, I mean, the other thing to say about McDowell as well, well, two things actually, in relation to whether you pick Ferguson in the back row, you're looking for balance across a team. You need enough carriers. And if you're going to go maybe slightly lighter in carrying in the back row, then McDowell adds that in the centres. And it, yeah, just that balance across a team. And I think, yeah, you go one way or the other. So this makes sense to me. Um, <clears throat> the other thing was, and this is something that somebody in the comments kindly pointed out is that apparently Stefan McDowell's got a real good short kicking game as well, you know, similar to Tua Pilotu. So potentially there's an extra threat there from Scotland. And as okay. we spoke about with the Italians, the more different types of threats you get, the more valuable that is. So um yeah, there's an option there for them as well. That's good. And that that's it's Jones's club partner, isn't it? I think yes, that's correct. So they'll, yeah. they'll be they'll be um you know know each other really really well. I don't think it's a it's it's a risk. Um but uh, yeah, horses for courses seems to be the theme. Yeah, onto the bench. A uh, couple of changes here. Rory Sutherland comes back in. Uh, this is his first game for the championship, I think, isn't it? Uh, for Alex Hepburn. And uh, they've gone 5-3 on the bench, which uh, not many people expected. I think most people thought that last week's 6-2 in Italy was in preparation to go 6-2 against Ireland here. But they've gone back to three backs with Horn, Redpath and Rowe. Interesting, yeah. Um, again, this it, I think it's reactive one off off the back of of the Italian game and 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 then off the back of what England did to Ireland. I think um, he's 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 seen something um, and um, will look to exploit that in the second half probably. Um, Red Pat's really good to come on, isn't he? I think um, you know um, if the game is open um, as it was uh, last week. Um, in in Twickenham, it, it it opened up even the last minutes sort of thing. So, if he's predicting that, then that that maybe that's what what, what he's looking at there. But um, yeah, sh- shame that um, Hepburn's out. But um, 
you know, Sutherland's been is he he's been, he's been fighting an injury, is he, to, to get back in? Um so yeah, no, good to see him back. Yeah, a few years ago, Rory Sutherland was I mean, he, he played for the British and Irish Lions and uh he was, I think, at one stage the best loose head in the Northern Hemisphere, as far as I was concerned. That was a very short period, but he, he was. I thought he was really outstanding. So it's good to see him getting back into the Scotland squad because he has, you know, he's been an outstanding player in the past, and I'm sure he can get back to those heights again. Now, in terms of the backs, Gregor Townsend said that having going 5-3, he just wanted more options in the back division at his disposal this week to come on and potentially change the game in lots of different ways. So I guess that's why, um, you know, we've, we've got Redpath in there along with Rowe. OK, in Dublin, what's the weather looking like, Elko, for Saturday, do you know? No, I haven't looked. <laughs> Um, I don't think it will matter too much, to be honest. I think they could be, again, similar to previous uh, chats here about Wales and Italy. How are these teams going to turn up psychologically? Are they going to turn up full of confidence because they both played with huge amounts of confidence during this tournament? Or is it going to be a nervy kind of mistake-ridden start, which we have seen as well from both teams? Yeah. Uh... <sighs> It's it's hard to predict, really, but I don't. I I, th- I think they're both uh, wounded animals, um, and uh, it's. I, I think it's 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 more to the detriment of of Scotland because they they know they've let something slip that they could have been going into this weekend as a huge huge game, and it still is a huge game. Don't get me wrong, um, but it doesn't have as much riding on it, really. Um, and, and and Ireland will be. Uh, I'll tell you what will be interesting if Ireland don't get a good start and and Scotland start to dominate. Uh, you know, we spoke about this about Twickenham last week. What could happen is you know this, the atmosphere in the last home home game for Ireland was a bit weird. Um, I think it was Italy and it was, it was um, or maybe Wales, but uh, it was just a bit odd. Um, and I think if they're not. I mean, there's a lot of annoyed Irish people that travelled last week, um, and you know, no one, no one likes losing to England, <laughs> but particularly if you've been giving it some and, and saying how good you are, and then then you lose to England, you know all about it. So, um, you know, that that could that could people could get start getting on their back. It could be twicking a muck too. Um, no, I, I, you know, so I think it's important that Ireland get a get a fast start for that reason, but also because I don't think they did against England and, and and didn't set the tone. And knowing what's what a character Farrell is, I would be gobsmacked if we don't come out and be very, very physical uh, on the edge. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more yellow cards this weekend, frankly, on both sides. Um, I think it will be a massive battle up front um, and a battle of wills. And um, part of me thinks it's all about the win. Um, frankly, um, for Ireland, I think I think we just got to go out and beat them up, and be very, very direct, and um, yeah, get that win um, and, and um, save face from last week. I agree. I think Ireland will be uh, a force of nature at the start of this game. I think they're going to want the ball and they're going to want to keep it for long, long periods, and just batter into Scotland over and over again. Obviously, using their sort of intricate attacking shapes to give themselves the best advantage. If Scotland can get a good start, if Scotland can nick a try somewhere through, you know, the lethal finishing that we saw against England, uh, and if they can do that once or maybe twice, then this game could turn very, very nervy as well. Imagine if we get to the 60, 65 minutes again and, you know, both teams are within a score. Like, it could could turn very nervy, this game. And I don't know. I, I think Ireland might see this through. And and have enough lead on the scoreboard by by the time we get to that stage, so it won't be comfortable, but it won't be nervy either. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I, it's it's one of those where uh, you know we've both, we've all played in teams where you 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 know we always bang on about psychology, but you know so, you know you're really confident, you know everything's going to be okay, and it. It felt like Ireland thought that's what was going to happen last week, and it wasn't okay. And 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 do they now have any doubt? And and is that going to be like a little worm in the head that 
you know, they get to that point and they think, oh no, and then they start to bottle up. I mean, they shouldn't do because they're they're an excellent team and arguably that you could say that that, that could have been, you know, the, after the New Zealand game and the World Cup, maybe that. But, but you know, the, the other thing is that have we had it quite easy because lots of the teams didn't really challenge because they thought we were so good. And then all of a sudden you've now got a blueprint of how to beat us. And you beat us by setting the tone and being incredibly physical. Now, do Scotland have the personnel to do that this weekend? Yeah, I think they probably do. Have they done it before? No. Um, and that, now's the time to do it. And, and you know, everyone over here in the UK, the, the, the amount of abuse that Scotland are getting, it's, it's very much, you know, we're we're kind of sick of this. It's, it's you know, you, you, you promise so much and then and then you slip up. Um, so, yeah, the psychology is huge. I think I think both results are the worst results, obviously, um, for Scotland last week. <laughs> um, it would have been so much better if both teams won. Um, but almost like if the fact that Ireland lost, it, it makes it, I think, way more difficult for Scotland. Um, just because I think there's going to be real, real fire there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I do. Um, okay. What... Uh... Money on where your mouth is, Elko. Where uh, who's going to win by how much? Scotland by fifty. Uh, <laughs> no, I've got I've got Ireland eight plus eight plus. Okay, I also think Ireland. I think Scotland will cause Ireland plenty of problems during this game, but I think the just the force of will and the quality of this, this Irish team will see them through. And uh, God, in terms of score, what do I think? I think maybe a little bit less this this week. Something like 26 18, I'm going to go for. Nice. Okay, that's what we think, people. But what do you think at home? Have we gone through all the key matchups here? How do you think tactically it's going to pan out? We'd love to hear from you in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. Elko, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, CT. Enjoy the games. Will do. And for people at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.